that a speech or an introduction was too short. So I'll keep that in mind. Now when I uh, got the call from the diocese that Angela was nominated for this award, I said, that sounds great. And I hung up and I said, well, I didn't know she was a lawyer. She sure hides it well. <laughs> I was happy to hear the news that she had been nominated and eventually, of course, received the award. But then I also was reminded that she was the, the president of the St. Thomas More Society, which I figured she probably gets to pick the person who gets the award. <laughs> <laughs>
a good time or, or whether she should call back later. I'm like, no, 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 this is perfect. She is sleeping. So I ended up driving, circling a parking lot for, I don't know how long the conversation was. Um, and um, the baby correction queen did not make a peace. Uh, which reminds us, we have to trust that he will provide, although the Holy Spirit does not have a sense of peace. Now, watching my kids grow up helped me understand what it means by it takes a village to raise a child. Now, looking back, I think it took a village to raise me too. And I'm very fortunate that many of those who helped make me who I am today are here this evening. Uh, friends I volunteer with, colleagues from work, associates from the St. Thomas More Society, friends from the Cathedral of the Blessed Sacrament, members of the Red Mass Committee, colleagues of the bar, members of the bench, priests, and religious. And of course, I want to thank my family, my husband Kai, who needs to wake up every morning at 3.45 and go to work. of 
faith in their healing process. And don't underestimate the power, your power, as a faith community in helping the most vulnerable in their healing process. Sometimes simply by showing your belief and your support. We remember, I remember the first woman we served in our human trafficking shelter was a practicing Catholic. She was brought over to the US and was immediately trafficked. After she start, shared with our staff that she was Catholic, our staff made arrangements for her to attend Catholic services. Ultimately, the ability for her to practice her faith and our shelter staff's recognition of that need were critical of that healing. By all measure, I'm still a young lawyer. I, I think I'm still, I still consider myself a young lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe one of you right here. I have more questions than answers. Nevertheless, I do have two resources to offer tonight. One. We are fortunate to live in Sacramento, a community that champions dialogue and bringing people together to come up with solutions to difficult problems. We have four thinking leaders in our judicial branch and our faith communities, such as Judge Mikes, Justice George Nicholson, a presiding judge and justices um, at the Superior Court and the Third TCA, and um, clergy members of different faiths, including Father Kruna, who we'll come together every year to organize what we call the Court Clergy Conference. It is a forum of mutual support, understanding, and collaboration between the judiciary and the faith communities. In fact, this Thursday is our fifth annual Court Clergy Conference, and it will be held at St. Clair Catholic Church in Roseville. Thank you, Bishop Soto. This conference program is always timely and inspiring. And in fact, this year's program includes a plenary panel discussion on building bridges in polarizing times. Can't be more timely than that. And of course, we at the St. Thomas More Society offer programs on ethics, professionalism, and civility in areas where faith and law cross their paths. Um, I was told to tell everyone and invite everyone um, to join us on November 8th, which is a Thursday, for our mixer. Hope you will join us. In closing, I want to share a little bit about my faith journey, uh, which has its own twists and turns. I'm not a cradle Catholic, but I was a product of Catholic education. I spent 15 years at a school run by the Kenosian Sisters in Hong Kong. Our elementary school uh, put all the Catholic students in the same class so we could have CCD as part of our RE curriculum. Although I was not a Catholic then, I was placed in a Catholic student class. Well, 15 years went by, I never got baptized. Our principal sister Louise used to call me the lost sheep. Now, fast forward many years later, life brought me to Sacramento where I work a few blocks from the cathedral. Guess who runs the RCIA program in the cathedral? Sister Jenny, a Kenosian sister. And boy, did I give her a difficult time. I was not easy. But those of you who know Sister Jenny knows that she has her own way when it comes to very difficult people. <laughs> then I take my brother, David Steinert Rass once wrote, when a situation appears hopeless, there's always room for surprise. So, again, my thanks to you, Bishop Soto, and to the Red Mass Committee for the honor of this encounter.